All right, in this next uh, lecture series, this is Ken. I am going to hit up on uh, basic electronic fan control operation, let's say. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm, what I'm gonna cover with this particular area is, uh, even though it's showing as an independent fan control, um, there are a lot of similarities to this control and what a manufacturer would put in an integrated furnace control module. So we're going to take a look at um, at this application. So on um, specifically I'm on page six on my module and um, so an electronic fan control um, typically the way that these will function or the way that they will work is we oftentimes will have to have some sort, we always start it with some sort of a thermostat input. So this thermostat input that we're showing here provides an input into the furnace control or into some sort of a, provides an input saying, hey, by the way, we need some heat. And um, typically, unless it's a commercial job or a job where a customer wants to run their fan continuously, Normally, the fan is not running constantly. It's cycling with the, with the system. So in the example here, oftentimes um, that thermostat is prov providing that input, which, of course, the furnace is going to do what it thinks it needs to do to operate safely. And then, of course, um, the, the, the job of that is to energize um, basically... To energize the main gas um, to, to the main gas valve would be energized. So the main gas valve would obviously get powered and once that is going, that right there is usually the big trigger. So when the main gas valve gets energized in a furnace control, a, a high percentage of the furnace controls nowadays, that's the trigger that says Okay, now we're going to, now that we've energized the main gas valve, now we're going to provide that necessary input into the fan control. And then the fan control at that point typically would, um, would start the timing. So in, um, so in this case here, I'll just make a note of that. It starts the timing for whatever it is that we want to, to do with that. Now, once that starts the timing, then after a certain amount of time, and specifically um, this one here, it's saying approximately 40 seconds, that is 100% that is on the manufacturer. So they will, um, the manufacturer, um, they will set this. Now, there are some minor adjustments that we can do in the field, um, but most of the time, that's normally what happens. Now, on commercial rooftops, a lot of them will have even a, what they call an adaptive timing where, they'll, where they will energize the main gas valve and then based upon if they ran off on a limit or did any type of other input that told them there was a problem with it, they would automatically adjust um, that setting. Now, and... That's kind of the one way to do that. Residentially, I've not seen that yet on any types of furnaces um, that, are, that are out there. So that's normally really the process and the procedure. So essentially, you have a thermostat input. The furnace starts its sequence. From the sequence, once the main gas, cell, gas valve is energized, then, of course, the timing starts for the fan. And then after a certain number of seconds, whether it's 45, 60 65, 70 seconds, usually within that time period, that's when that main blower starts. So that's normally what happens. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at one of our, uh, one of our systems and some of our circuits. Uh, so I wanted to start out with a, um, a, a, what they call a camstat timed on temperature terminated type of a, of a control. Now this, this timer or this, um, Let's call it, it's more of like a fan assist. And what it happens to have is it has a, a limit 
that is has a fixed setting on this control in, in a lot of cases. In some cases, it can be adjustable, but um, it has a setting. Now, what will happen then is um, there are two terminals that I've identified on here. One of them is essentially going to be terminal 5, and the other one's going to be terminal 6. So terminal 5, as you can tell, is uh, right here, over here. Terminal 6 is this terminal down here. Now, these are... Uh, you know, I've seen these on a variety of furnaces, whether it's residential or commercial. Um, this control is, is um, easily identified by, it's uh, just by the terminal designations and the, the single pointer, um, those kinds of things. So they give you um, a couple of other terminals to, to look at, terminal two and terminal four. And uh, terminal two and terminal four on the control would um, would be what allows the fan circuit to, to be controlled. So it's allowing the switching. Now, what I would suggest in, in every situation is to always look at the manufacturer's diagram and see what they're doing in the event that somebody changed the control, um, maybe they switched it to something different, but um, so you're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with whatever is, is on, that, on this unit. Now, what's interesting about this one is the fact that they have a they give you a pointer that is adjustable and that pointer that's adjustable is a pointer that allows um, you to adjust the off it says fan off pointer is what they're doing so what they are setting up is they're basically saying okay we're going to allow the heat that it senses via bimetal and also there's an Kind of an let's call it an internal heater which of course that's the timed on portion so this control when they say timed on a lot of times on these types of on these controls when you look at them and there's no timer then you know what it's doing it's using a little a little bimetal heater or a little um, heater to assist the bimetal in, in turning the fan on correctly in the in an appropriate amount of time so pretty pretty straightforward um, and uh, we'll take a look at some of those on certain pieces of equipment. So let's move on to the next one. And the next um, control that we're going to look at is one that's probably a little bit more um, typical. And on this particular unit, has a it's called a CAMSTAT electronic fan control. It is timed on and timed off. It is 100% timing is what this one is set up to be. Now, this particular control, um, there's a few terminals that we're going to take a look at, and I'll help you identify them. Um, so one of them is um, on, the, on the control itself. There's actually, um, they have what they call a timed on um, part of the circuit, and that's listed as right here. So timed on, and you're going to notice that they give an adjustable dial that allows you to adjust it anywhere from 15 to 90 seconds um, is, the, is kind of that norm. Um, the timed off, which is right below it on here, that particular timed off section, as you can tell, the timed off is where that fan off adjustment is. And that's where, that's the time that would be um, from the time that it removes the input signal to say, hey, by the way, we had this demand the time off timing starts at that point and that's where it'll be anywhere from 30 to 120 now that's um it would be very uh, unusual to see it ever set to 30 but there are times where it potentially could be in in a case where maybe a very little to no duct work that could be one thing but that's kind of one one little deal that they have in there so all these little uh, marks that are shown here. These are actually the kind of like a spade connector um, Right here. All of these are the spade connectors where the wires would be pushed on All right now So look, let's look at a few other things. It's a 24 volt control It is it has some inputs um, And we're going to take a look at at a couple of things that will go on here now I'm going to show you one of the kind of one of the ways or one of the, the setups that they have this set up on here. So I'm going to draw this out as, um, let's say, a 115 volt circuit. 
and we're going to obviously have our normal things that would go on so and we'll draw it's kind of the transformer so we'll say that's my neutral that would be my hot i'll say and then this will be the low voltage side and of course on most of these systems what they're going to do right off that transformer they're going to run this circuit over and they're going to oftentimes what they're going to do is this they're going to power up that 24 volt side and we are also going to have on the 24 volt side we're going to have what they call the common in this case so let's say this is 24 I'll just say this is 115 this is going to be my hot and we so we have our let's call it our hot and our common so our 24 volt hot our 24 volt common on this transformer circuit so right now we've applied 24 volts between the common and the 24 volts input on this control now there's two additional inputs that you might notice and the two additional inputs that they're showing here are a limit input and they're showing a gas valve input so what I am going to do now and I'm going to actually switch to um, I'm just going to draw some lines here to make it easy enough to do and I'll switch that to red now what we're going to do is this we're going to pull 24 volts off of this terminal as an example and Okay, and all right, let's see if we can get it to draw. There we go. All right, now I'm going to, I'm actually going to move this up a little bit right there. All right, now in this circuit, so this one here, what we're going to show is we're going to just show a, a limit, and I'm going to, I'll draw that. So this one is going to be, I'll just draw this as one of the limits. Okay, so I'll say that's limit number one. Let's just say, I'm going to draw a second limit in here. Let's say that's limit number two as an example. Limit two, I'll say. And then maybe I'll even throw in an additional limit. Maybe there's like a um, like a block vent safety limit or some sort. I'm gonna draw that one it's just slightly different. Sometimes you'll see them drawn with a T on top of it to indicate that it's a manual reset. And I'll draw that one in there. So right now we're looking at a, a little bit of a limit string so I'll just list this on as uh, the block vent safety switch uh, as an example all right now all of those limits that we have in here is all of these limits what we're gonna do is this we're gonna continue on this path here okay so I got that one there got that one there now, the way that these limits are going to be set up now is we're going to make that connection or that input directly into that limit switch input. So we'll just say, I'm just going to put a note on here that this, um, without a doubt, that's an input. Okay, so that's one of my inputs. Now, that's going to be indeed a 24 volt input. So I'll just make a little, a little note on that here that that's an input into there. And what we're also going to do is I'm going to pull power off of this one. And I'll switch that to solid like that. And I'm going to pull some power out of this. Now... What we're going to do is this. 
So off that limit switch input on that controller, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go to and draw a little circle with a screw terminal on, and I'm going to identify that as terminal R. Now, terminal R is, should have some meaning. Typically, that means it's my 24 volt input. Now, what I'm going to, or my 24 volt power. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a, a thermostat that's going to close on a fall in temp. So, this will be, let's just, I'll put a terminal there. Let's say that's terminal W as an example. Now, from there, I will then proceed further and from there I'll proceed a little bit further so let's say this goes to ignition module gas valve all that good stuff so let's just say I'll just list this as ignition um, module um, and then I'll just list it on here gas valve so that's all going to be wired accordingly now what's important to recognize is the um, ignition module and I'm just going to list this as um, main um, gas valve. Now what this main gas valve does, once the main gas valve gets energized, then that's going to provide an input directly into that gas valve input. And it's, it's in, important to recognize that it's the main gas valve that provides that input. And then of course, um, certainly you have to have a common um, that'll you know from the gas valve that will tie directly into into that so that's basically you're feeding power into the main gas valve you have your common to complete the circuit so essentially what this is is the gas valve input the gas valve input that you that you're seeing right here this input whoa this input let's get back to here all right, so that gas valve input, what it's doing is that gas valve input essentially started the timing. That's what it's doing. So it's starting that timing. So once it started the timing, it's now it's going, as soon as it sees this input right there, it says, okay, let's start our time on and let's get that going. So at this point right now, as you can tell, we have your 24 volts that's identified here. We have our 24 volt common that's identified there. And we have a limit and a, a limit input and we have a gas valve input. And that's essentially what's gonna control this system. Now, this um, also will have a set of contacts. So they may list these or show these as a normally open set of contacts. However, don't be surprised if you test them with nothing connected to them, no input for the limit or gas valve or, or 24 volts. Don't be surprised if you don't see that it could be normally closed. Um, a lot of these controllers are set up that way where they will, they'll show you the contacts as being open, but when you test them, they will be closed. And it's primarily because of the they, they oftentimes will set it up that way where if, if, you, if the system were functioning correctly, it would be considered as a normally, um, it would be considered as a normally open circuit. But if there's any failure, then immediately um, that will end up showing these as a closed circuit as an example. So just so you're aware of that, that could indeed happen. So they might show it that way. Anyways, now the way that this one's gonna work now is so if you think about a typical heating demand, a typical heating demand, we, we have a, a heating demand, the thermostat closes, we tell our ignition module, let's get started. We energize the gas valve, the gas valve starts to warm up the heat exchanger, and then after a certain amount of time, the unit, heat, you know, the, the fan kicks on. So that might be 45, 60 seconds later. All right, so if all goes well, by the time that happens, what we're going to see is we will see the gas valve, the heat call will be satisfied. And the second the heat demand is satisfied, what will happen then is we will expect to see this input 
will be gone. So now the second starts timing at that point, we started it. Um, but when you, what I'm going to say here is this, is that, um, come on. So we're starting the timing off, the off timing, when the input is removed. So in other words, when the main gas valve shuts or closes or doesn't or loses its power to the, to the main gas valve, then immediately that control knows it and says, okay, now we need to go to the off timer is what we need to do. Now we're going to go to the off timer and get that going. So that's primarily the main, the main way that it does that. So... Now, so that, that makes sense. So you have the gas valve is the main input, which it says, hey, by the way, if I'm going to need any power in, i got to make sure I understand that uh, once I energize that main gas valve, I should start timing because I know I'm heating my heat exchanger. And once that heating demand is done, then I know that I'm going to lose that input. Um, but at no time should I lose the, the, the limit switch input unless, of course, there's a failure. And uh, so we can talk about that next. So what would happen? What would happen if all of a sudden, um, you know, this limit input, let's say one of these limits opened up. So let's say that this limit opened up as an example. If that limit opened up and all of a sudden that would totally take away power from here. So you no longer have power there or anything beyond here at all. That's all gone. Now, that being said, that means the second that I would lose input on that limit switch input, you'd have to think about what on earth would you want to do? What would you want to do with that? And I would think logically it would be telling me that there is a, a, there's something got overheated. Something got warmer than it should have been. So I think logically it makes sense that we might even want to say, well, if if the limit open up then, and it overheated, then I think we should probably run that fan. So that being said, the second that you lose that input on there, regardless of timing, this control will immediately close this contact if you lose your input. So, so that would, you know, so logically you could say, well, it's going to close, you know, if we'll just say loss of that input so if we lose that power there it's got to close and it's going to close immediately and it may not it's not going to look at timing it's not going to do anything so on applications where i've seen these used what they will do is they they um, if you have an open limit that never reset itself or maybe it wasn't able to reset itself the second you lost that input that, that fan will run and run and run and run. And the complaint that the customer will usually say is, it's just blowing cold air around. And um, that's, so that's kind of the one area you kind of look at. It's like, all right, do we have power on that input? Um, that's kind of the way I would look at that. So very straightforward. Um, it's a nice little control. Um, in fact, the way that, uh, in fact, a lot of those controls, to give you a little background on this, the manufacturers... Well, they, what they realize is that the thermal sensing of these, the thermal sensing of those controls were not very good. And um, they, were, they weren't very effective. So what was going on is, is, the, is like those old helical bimetal elements, some of those controls, what, those, what was happening is the manufacturer would see that control and um, they were seeing that control. They were seeing that control not closing and getting the fan running soon enough so that they realized is that, you know what, we, we got a little bit of a problem here on these real light heat exchangers that are used nowadays in these higher efficiency uh, furnaces. So they decided we better go to something else. Now, what they're doing is because we're going to, some, because we're going to something else, there's something else was let's go to all timing. So that's where... A lot of the manufacturers decided, well, if we're going to go to the timing, why don't we just put a control in there that does the timing? Well, the early stages of a lot with a lot of these retrofits, 
and these retrofit kits, what they did was they sent along a timer and another limit is what they did. And it was the old helical bimetal limit with a fan kit and a timer kit. And that's what you saw earlier is uh, because they needed to somehow get better control of these heat exchangers. And that was one of the issues. So uh, again, um, very, very good. A lot better control of the heat exchanger. Did a more effective job at that. So that's a little bit on that, on that cam sat control. Um, that's by far probably the most common. Hamilton Standard. Now, I, I don't plan and don't intend to go through every single one of these, but I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you the similarities so you understand what's going on with these. So the first thing that I would identify is when we look at um, operation adjustment of the standard, so this is like a little circuit board that's got a set of contacts to tell the blower to turn on or off, and it's got the same things that you saw earlier. So this little Hamilton standard control has a limit input, okay? And it's got a, so it's got a limit input, it's got a 24 volt input, it's got a 24 volt common, and it's got a gas valve input. Now, what's interesting about, about that is, um, what's interesting about that is the, um, it looks the same other than the location of those inputs um, as the, the CAMSAT device on here. So, and you think about it, what's the reason for the limit input? The limit input saying, hey, if I don't have power here, then that tell, that's probably telling me something is overheated. Um, you're gonna have the power input, you're gonna have the common, and that should be going on all the time. If you lose your, um, if you lose the power at the, you know, the gas valve, whether you have it or not, that's essentially a timing, starting or stopping is really what that's doing. And the limit is you're really just saying, you know, hey, did, did my safeties and do that stuff uh, work on there? So, and the adjustments, the harder part, the, what I didn't like about this particular control primarily is what I didn't like about those controls is I didn't like the fan on and off adjustments, um, what they were, it was difficult to know uh, what the timing was. So that's kind of the one thing that, that uh, was my complaint on that one. Here's another one that's another one that I've seen in a few jobs, and this is a, uh, a heat craft electronic fan control timer. And again, um, you can get an idea a little bit on, on the, let's say, the ampacities of these controls. And that's, that was probably the number one failure that I saw in some of these controllers. Um, so for example, like this controller you'll notice has um, a 12 um, full load amps on that blower for 120 volts. And um, that, so the problem you run into is a lot of these, a lot of those, those contacts would tend to fail. And because a lot of the blowers, when you use these on a larger unit where you were, you could be potentially pulling, you know, 10, 12, 15 amps, it was just too much for these controls. So you had, sometimes you were replacing those quite regularly just because they weren't rated for that. Um, and that was, that's a little bit of an issue that they run into on these. Now this, this particular input, you'll notice, um, you, as you can tell right on here, 24 volts input, they have a common, they have a valve input, and they have a limit input. So again, a lot of similarities that we've already hit up on. This particular heat craft model, again, they have a delay off setting and the, a delay on setting. Again, nice little control and um, nice little control is what they have. So, and um, the heat craft, this one here, same, just the same old thing on here, just showing you uh, just a, another view of that particular control. So, all right, so let's, um, let's dive into a little bit on, now that we've looked at how simple the wiring and all that is, but let's talk about the troubleshooting side of this thing. So how do we test the circuit out? And so we, we know that we have to have power at the, 20, the hot 24 volt hot input at 24 volts AC and at the limit input 
all the time, whether we have a heating demand or not. There, we also need to have um, power, and obviously common, 24 volts common, would go to the common input. That's pretty self-explanatory. So how would we test the circuit out? So the thing that I would be looking at doing is, as I am mentioning in the document, is saying anytime there's power at the furnace, 24 volts should be present across those two terminals and the common and limit terminals. So describing what we had said. Once that module's energized that as energized the gas valve, then we need to see 24 volts between the common and the gas valve input. So the test in the field, if you're trying to test timing, as an example, is they're saying connect a jumper, connect a jumper, so connect a jumper across 24 volts and the gas valve terminal. So in other words, you would be primarily, um, this is, and again, I want to reiterate this, the, the assumption here is that the gas valve input, um, you've removed that terminal. So now you're really just, you're trying to manually test this control out. So whatever is on here, whatever is on this control, you're going to want to remove that one is primarily. So what they're saying is they're saying, let's take a jumper and we're going to go ahead and put a jumper and we're going to jumper and send a signal between those two points. So from right there to right there. Once you do that, that's where the blower should start the timing on that, whatever that delay is, is what's going to go on there. As soon as you set that. Now, once, so after, let's say if it's set for 45 seconds or 60 seconds on the on, that means after X amount of time, then I'm fully expecting these set of contacts then to after that delay to close after the delay. So that's what I would say, close after uh, delay. All right, now, once that gets going, you know, it says, now we'll say, all right, now let's remove that jumper. So now we're going to erase that input. And once we do that, that should in turn, um, after this time off delay, that should now allow this set of contacts to now open up and the blower should be off at that point. So that's really what you're trying to do trying to do on there. Now, one of the things that, um, you know, I've, that I've even done this too on jobs where I've got a, the blower, it's supposed to turn on. One of the things that, I'm, that I would do is I'd say, well, if I want to turn that on as note number three says, if I were to disconnect the wire at the limit input, that should cause that blower to start immediately. So if you understand this control, you'll realize is that that limit input right there is your key. You want to immediately, you just want to know, is the, does the blower even work? Or is there, you know, is there power to the unit or anything like that? You could simply just pull that little, in, that limit input wire off. Once that's off, that blower should start. The second that's off, at that point, now we're looking at, I got a close set of contacts immediately saying, hey, there was a limit problem and we need to go on there so that's kind of the typical way so just as they're describing here that's kind of the the easy way to do that um, it's very similar you know a typical typical ways that you know if you think about how would we troubleshoot even a, a brand new furnace with a integrated gas control module the same thing would apply if you think about any time that you would disconnect a limit wire you would fully expect that fan to turn on right away um, no questions asked and simply because it would assume that there's a problem with that. Now, the exception of this could be depending on which limit and how that furnace control has the, you know, is integrated. So that would be kind of one other way to, to look at it. So that is um, kind of the extent of the, let's call it the, the timing for the fan controls and how that's set up on there for that type of a, of a controller on there. Again, um, I know I've used 